Hi everyone. We are now entering the new subtopic for chapter 3. Periodicity. Periodicity is a pattern or trend. Do you still remember the third learning outcomes for this chapter is to describe the variation in atomic radius across a period, across the first row of the transition elements, and also down the group. So what is atomic radii or atomic size? The size or radius of an atom is difficult to be defined exactly because the electron cloud has no exact clear boundary. So, to solve this, the atomic radius is taken as half of the distance between the nuclei of the two adjacent identical atoms. For example, let's say these two atoms are the chlorine atoms and the bond length of the two chlorine nuclei is 198 picometer. Therefore, the atomic radius of chlorine is half of 198 picometer. That will give us 99 picometer. The atomic radius of an element is determined by two factors. The first factor is effective nuclear charge felt by the valence electron and the second factor is the value of the principal quantum number of the valence electron or screening effect. The two factors will be explained in further detail in tutorial class. Generally, there is a gradual decrease in atomic radii across a period from left to right. For example, as you can see from this diagram, in period 2, the atomic radius decreased from the lithium to neon. And in period 3, the atomic radius also decreased from sodium to chlorine atom. So, why is that happening? Let us see how effective nuclear charge affects the size of the atom. Effective nuclear charge is the nuclear charge that actually felt by an electron because of the nucleus attraction. And the value of the effective nuclear charge is determined by the following formula. Effective nuclear charge equal to Z minus S where Z is the number of protons and S is the number of electrons in the inner shell. Now, let's learn how to calculate the effective nuclear charge based on the previous equation. For example, magnesium atom has the electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Based on the given equation, the effective nuclear charge can be calculated by the previous formula where number of proton minus the number of inner electron will give the effective nuclear charge. So for magnesium, the proton number of magnesium is 12 minus the inner electrons which is the number of electrons in inner shell. So 1s, 2s and 2p are the inner orbitals and the number of electrons in these orbitals are 2 plus 2 plus 6 that will give us 10. So 12 minus 10 equals to positive 2. The positive 2 is the effective nuclear charge of magnesium atom. The same rules apply to aluminium. So the electronic configuration of aluminium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p1. The proton number of aluminium is 13. 
and the inner electrons is located in n equals to 1 and n equals to 2. So there are 2 plus 2 plus 6 number of inner electrons that will give us a total of 10 inner electrons. So the effective nuclear charge can be calculated by number of proton which is 13 minus the number of inner electron which is 10 that will give us positive 3 which is the value of the effective nuclear charge of aluminium. The same rules apply to silicon and also phosphorus. Now, let's see how the effective nuclear charge actually affected the variation of atomic size across a period. Across a period, the number of proton and the number of electron increase by 1. However, each electron is added to the same shell and therefore the electrons are relatively ineffective at shielding each other and the screening effect is said to be constant. At the same time, more proton is added to the nucleus, thus the effective nuclear charge for electron in valence shell increases. When the nucleus attraction towards the valence electrons becomes stronger, it causes the valence electron to be drawn closer to the nucleus and hence causes the size of atom to decrease. On descending a group, there is an increase in the atomic radius as the proton number increase. The higher the value of the principal quantum number of the valence electron, the larger the atomic radius. So, if we can see from this diagram, the atomic radius increase from lithium to cesium in group 1, and the atomic radius increase from beryllium to barium for elements group 2 and so on. The increase in atomic radius is majorly due to the screening effects. As we move down the group, the value of N increase and the greater the number of shells. The electrons in inner shells shield the electrons in outer shells from the nuclear charge and this situation is called the screening effect. As the screening effect increases when the number of the shell increases, the nucleus attraction towards the valence electrons becomes weaker and consequently the size of atoms increase as we move down a group.